So today's session is meant to provide an update on work currently underway within TSEAS. And so I'd like to present our, or present our presenters or introduce our presenters, uh, the co-chairs of the committee. Uh, first, we have Karen Brindenberg. She's a metadata strategist and again, co-chair of TSEAS. Um, she's at the Kommunal Verbundet Sidarkivera in Sweden. Uh, we also have Mark Kester, uh, our other co-chair and archivist at the Beinecke Rare Book Library and Manus Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University. So I'll hand this off to Karen to start a presentation. Thank you, Corey. Welcome, everybody, and I'll just kick off. So TSEAS. Um, Technical Subcommittee Encoded Archive Standards was formed in 2016. And it was just, it was not just a coincidence that we were formed. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the family tree we have, but I'm going to start off about why we are here and why we, why we have TSEAS. What we do uh, is that we take care of the formats that all you use for manage, manage, managing and sharing archival information and in archival information i group everything uh, so the archival description the archival creator and currently that means that we are working with eid and eaccpf so our biggest role is to be the maintainers of eid and eaccpf so i really hope that you know who we are but I'm also understand that we are not that visible. So this is our way of showing you who we are. Uh, we are a committee, yes, and we work with the standards, but we can't work with the standards without the users. So we really need all your comments, suggestions and bug reports to bring the standards forward and have them evolve as they need to be doing. And it's a common work we do. You need to help us because we are a limited number of people and we do have input, yes, but we need input from everybody who are using the standards so we actually know that we are doing the correct things. So it's a really big thing for us to have the users with us. We're not going to do, and do anything without the users saying we should do it. So what is TSEIS? Uh, when I started working with all these things, I heard the acronym ICA the whole time and I really had problems. I'm coming from Sweden. ICA here is IKEA and it, it's our supermarket. What do they have to do with this? Well, being in the archives, you know, it's the International Council of Archivists and they do have a lot of working groups and they did a huge effort and created standards for archival information. And you, they are all available online and for free. They do have some parts that are not available for free, but the ones that we are talking about are free. Uh, they created the standards, but they missed the thing of how do you move the information? It's good to have it on paper, yes, but if I want to transfer my records in any way, how do I do that? So they miss, missed a little bit the part of the exchange formats. Uh, that brings me into the family tree of TSEIS. Knowing there were no exchange format, the first of the groups that was, that was created was the EID working group. I think they have a, had a number of names and uh, they created the exchange formats for ESAD GIA. And released two different versions, EID1 and EID2002. Uh, for the record creators, the, the group, EAC, the EAC working group was uh, started and they created the exchange format for EAC, which it was named in the beginning and then it became EAC CPF. Uh, those, these both groups had a lot of members being members of SIA. Uh, but also international members. So finding a way to work together with the groups, some people were in both groups, the 
natural place and home was SIA. The meetings for the groups have been at SIA. And when the, the groups were put into SIA, first of all, as different separate groups, um, the natural place was the standards committee. So the standards committee was the uh, place where we reported, they reported. And we also have a, they also had a close connection, connection with what was then named the EID section, but now is named the EIS section. Today, we are still doing as before. We work internationally. Uh, half of our members are from US and the rest is international. And I heard, heard a complaint that we need some more colors in, this flag, in the flags and I can agree with that. So that's a, one of the things we are working with, getting more and other international members as well as US members. So we were created from EID, EIC, and we also for a while had a schema development team who were supposed, uh, the task was to create the schemas for EID and EIC CPF. But routing, having three groups doing the same thing becomes not easy. So it was all, as I said, 2016, joined to one working group and with still the international memberships and cooperation. Because these standards are not just for US, they are for everybody. So we need to have the help from our, all around the world to be able to make these standards work for everybody. We have two, two co-chairs, as you heard, me being the international one. Even if I've heard I can take the train over to Yale easily, but I still haven't seen that. And we have one, uh, SIA based co chair being Mark. Uh, what we have done, even if we are one committee, is that we have sub teams to make it easier to have a small group being appointed and responsible for the work at the same time taking help from others. So we have one team for EICCPF, one for EAD, one for EICF, because one of the standards that ICA created was for the functions. And so far we need, that's one of the standards we are also looking into. We still have a schema team responsible for the schema maintenance and uh, development, as well as the development of the uh, transformations for the tag libraries. We have the outreach team, which is, thank you, thank you to the outreach team that we ha do have this op uh, opportunity today. We need to be more visible and the outreach team are doing a terrific job here, even if they haven't been around for that long. We also have our related standards team that look into different standards doing the same thing. So we see what they are doing and take inspiration for hopefully from each other, but we need to know and have a close eye on all of them. And with that, I'm planning to hand over to Mark and you get, get a more sight of how you can connect with us. Hi, everybody. So this is Mark. Um, as Karen has already provided a little bit of background and um, composition about our group, what I'm going to talk about is how we communicate as a committee, how you can get in touch with us, and a few of the projects that we're focused on right now. There are a variety of different tools and forms that we use throughout our work, but the first one that I'm going to discuss, which is the primary tool that we use, is the website known as GitHub. We are thankful to Carl Wilson at the Open Preservation Foundation for advising us how to use GitHub to manage our schema development workflows. We are still working to implement that guidance, but what you will see today when you visit our GitHub organizational site is a number of different repositories. You can think of these repositories as different websites where we really focus in on a specific aspect of the committee's work. For example, we currently have one repository for each XML encoding standard, EAD3 and EAC CPF. We even have a repository in GitHub for our notes. In that repository, you can find all of the meeting minutes from each of our subteams. In other words, our GitHub organization is meant to be a one-stop shop for everything related to TS, EAS, and all of our deliverables. 
A brand new deliverable that we're still working to complete is the TSEAS handbook. This handbook will serve as documentation about the committee itself, including its history, our policies, and workflow inf instructions. The primary audiences for this handbook are our committee members, but we are also making this document publicly available. More importantly, though, to me, is that we're using GitHub to keep track of feature requests, bug reports, and overall general feedback from the community. This is one of the fundamental goals of our committee, to conduct our work in a transparent forum that is open and freely available to everyone. And as the slide notes, one way to connect with us is to create what is known as an issue in GitHub. So what do I mean by an issue? Well, GitHub issues are kind of like emails, but instead of being locked away in a place that only committee members can interact with them, these issues are open and available to everyone. Anyone can create an issue and anyone can comment on one. That said, you do not need to visit GitHub to interact with TSEAS. You can find us in additional locations, both online and in person. As for where else you can find us online, the EAD website hosted by the Library of Congress is the best place to go to learn about the encoded archival description standard. The Library of Congress also hosts the EAD listserv, which is a fantastic resource. I'm grateful that they have been hosting that listserv for almost 25 years now. Not only can anyone use the listserv to discuss EAD, it's also a great place to learn about what's going on with EAC CPF. Speaking of EAC, the Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin provides hosting for the official EAC CPF website. This is the best place to go to learn about EAC CPF. The Staatsbibliothek was also kind enough to co-host a face-to-face -face meeting for the EAC CPF subteam earlier this year. It's very important that our committee is focused on ensuring that the development of our encoding standards happens in an international setting, which I think makes it especially fitting that the Library of Congress hosts the EAD website and the Staatsbibliothek zu Berlin hosts the EAC CPF website. Of course, you can also find us on the Society of American Archivists website. The first two links on this screen provide more information about our committee and how it fits into the overall structure of SAA, particularly the standards committee to which we report. The third link is yet another way that anyone can provide feedback to our group. Just in case you wanna provide feedback, but you don't wanna use GitHub to do so, you can use this handy web form on SAA's website to get in touch with us. Now onto the topic of where to find us in person. Our committee hosts a face-to-face -face meeting every year at SAA's annual meeting. This meeting is usually scheduled for an entire day, and it is always featured on the conference schedule. What I want everyone to be aware of is that this is an open meeting. That means that anyone is welcome to attend. If you are at all interested in learning what our committee is doing, I strongly encourage you to attend one of those meetings. And although I cannot make any promises, there's always the possibility that we will have donuts to share. Now, Although I do not know at this time whether we will be able to meet in person in Chicago during SAA 2020, I will say that even if we cannot gather in person this year due to COVID-19, we will nevertheless be meeting as a committee, even if the meeting is online. The schedule might be a little different than normal, and I suppose, yeah, there definitely won't be any donuts to share, but the open invitation would nevertheless stand. In addition to the TSEAS meeting, you can also find us at the SAA section meetings. You can definitely find us at the Encoded Archival Standards section meeting, which uh, Karn mentioned before. And we also have been known to make announcements at some of the other meetings, depending on the section's agendas each year. But whatever the forum, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us if you have questions, suggestions, or just want to introduce yourself. Now, the last topic that I want to discuss today are our current projects. We don't have time to discuss everything, so I'll just provide a quick overview of a few projects. First up is the EAC CPF revision. EAC CPF came out nearly a decade ago, and right now TSEAS is working on a major revision of that standard. We anticipate that this version will, will be released next year in 2021. One of the objectives of this revision is to align EAC CPF and EAD3 more closely. When EAD3 was released in August 2015, that revision of EAD incorporated a few elements of EAC CPF. In my mind, the current revision of EAC CPF is yet another step in that harmonization process. Please note that we are also planning to distribute a formal call for comments about the EAC CPF re revision before the end of this calendar year. 
And of course, you can follow um, our progress right now since we are conducting all of our work openly in GitHub. Although the EAC revision is our largest project right now, it is not the only one. The EAD subteam is also quite busy. Not only did we release a minor update to EAD3 in December of 2019, but given that EAD3 has been out for ne nearly five years now, it is almost time to undertake a major revision of EAD3. As for current projects, I would, re would be remiss not to mention this very webinar. In fact, the reason that Karin and I are conducting this webinar today is thanks to our newest subteam, the Outreach and Communications Group. I'm really excited about this team. It is very easy to get bogged down with a project such as a major revision of an XML schema, but with this new group in place, I hope that we can avoid gaps in communication. And as a reminder, this webinar is just the first in a series of updates from TSEAS. But of course, there's always more. So uh, given, the, given that the International Context, uh, excuse me, given that the International Council of Archives is working on the records and context conceptual model, as well as its ontology, we plan to engage with and provide feedback about those new standards, since it is likely that the conceptual model will have an impact on the XML schemas moving forward. Just as the ICA standards um, for ICEDG and ISAR-CPF inform the development and the revisions of EAD and EACCPF. And speaking of the ICA standards, as Karin mentioned earlier, there's also the international standard for describing functions. That standard does not have an official schema currently. At last year's SAA, um, SAA's annual meeting in Austin, Texas, though, we approved a proposal for TSEAS to undertake the development of an XML schema for functions. So that is yet another project that we will be working on in the near future. To wrap things up, I will simply say that I hope that this introductory webinar provides a useful overview of the TSEAS committee, what projects we are working on, and most importantly, has given you the necessary information and links that you can now use to connect with us.